Well, good morning. Man, it's so good to be with you guys. My name is Matt Roberts, and I'm here uh, from Ogden, Utah, and we are enjoying the sunshine. I think all of us stepped out of the house we were staying out this morning and just kind of bask in the sun. We haven't seen it in a few months where we live, and uh, what a blessing to be back here. I'm actually uh, spent six years of my life at the beginning of ministry. I uh, went to college in Lakeland, Florida. I uh, had the privilege of serving on staff in the Brandon area, and I uh, just had a, a blast here. And so I'm constantly trying to talk my wife back into moving to Florida. So we're, we're working this direction at some point. But uh, our story began here in Florida, but really moved us to a place where we had uh, this burning desire to plant churches for people who don't do church. Statistics tell us that there are more and more unchurched people in our communities than ever before in the United States of America. And uh, as I served on staff as a youth pastor and executive pastor at different churches, I began to realize that church wasn't a natural place to invite my friends, the people that I hung out with around dinner tables and spent my days with. And uh, so 11 years ago, my wife and I began to pray as we completed seminary in Denver, Colorado, where he would send us to plant a church. And we were really dreaming about inner cities, going into the darkest and hardest places that we could imagine. And we were open to go anywhere. But you can imagine, as I was praying, when God spoke Utah into my heart, it scared the death out of me. Because first of all, I didn't even know if Utah was in the United States of America. It could have been a sovereign country of Mormons for all I knew, because that's all I knew about Utah. And that's probably most of what you know about Utah. And so I chalked that up to maybe bad pizza that I'd had the night before, but the Holy Spirit uh, did what he often does to me in my life. When I ignore him, he speaks to my wife, and then I can't ignore him any longer. And uh, so we packed up two little boys at the time. Today we actually have four boys. We figured when in Rome, do as the Romans do. And we have a nice small Mormon family of six in our home today. Uh, but we packed up uh, the four of us in a small U-Haul trailer. And we drove to northern Utah, uh, where the religious majority is larger than anywhere else in the United States of America. There are pockets of our community that represent over 97% Mormon. The Christian church represents statewide less than 2% of our state, and we begin to dream how God would use us to plant a church there. And so as we began, man, God just opened one door after another from, uh, for us, and we were amazed that God began to live out the dream of a church for people who don't do church right in the middle of Ogden, Utah, the first day we opened our doors, we had about 200 people show up. We were so excited. We had drug addicts and homeless people, the hurting and the broken that came to our church. We were so excited until our bubble got burst a little bit that afternoon when we sat down to count an offering that we were hoping would help with the $7,000 a month lease we had just signed on a building, and it was $112. $112. That was about 55 cents per person, and we realized, man, we are in trouble. If we are going to plant a church for the hurting and the broken, then we have to understand that those people are going to come with more needs than they have resources at the beginning, and we have to start thinking differently about how we're going to move this calling and movement forward. In 10 years, uh, we have seen thousands of people make first-time commitments to Jesus in Ogden. And today, we have planted five different campuses across the country with this simple premise. We want to go to the darkest and hardest places and plant churches that simply preach the good news of Jesus. And today, we have a campus in New Orleans, Louisiana, which is a great place to visit and eat. I have put on 15 pounds since we planted in New Orleans. Uh, we have a church in Fort Collins, Colorado, where four years ago, we had the privilege of working with a strip club owner who had a radical encounter with Jesus and a dream placed in his heart to turn what had been a strip club in his family for 35 years in northern Colorado into a ministry center. And so we decided as a church that started with a $112 offering that we were going to go before God and say, God, if this is of you, we're going to believe that you can help us raise the two and a half million dollars we need to get this project done. And also, we're going to raise another quarter million dollars in order to love, serve, 
and, and give away to all of the dancers, the bouncers, and the bartenders that are going to lose their job when this happens. And God opened up the floodgates uh, of the 22 dancers that were employed at the Hunt Club. When we bought it today, 12 of those have given their life to Jesus. And one of those was just baptized a few weeks ago and stood up in front of our church and say, this building was the place that I lost my soul. This building was a place that uh, incarcerated me spiritually in my life. This is a place where I came to take my clothes off for men that only wanted to take advantage of me. And little did I know that this would be the place that I would meet Jesus and be so excited to come serve and worship day in and day out. Uh, we also have a campus in Provo, Utah. Uh, which Provo is the home of Brigham Young University, which is not a Bible college, if you were wondering. And uh, Provo actually represents the largest religious majority of any county in the United States of America. Again, close to 98% Mormon, and we see God growing a church there. So today, Genesis Project represents one of the largest churches in Provo, Utah, and we are running about 170 people there and no one has ever seen that type of movement in a community that has been deadlocked in a works-based oppressive religious movement most recently this last year we had the privilege of planting a brand new genesis project in downtown portland oregon which is widely considered kind of a, a hub of spiritualism and secular thought in our world and we are seeing god do incredible things there and that hope has really come for us. That calling, that mandate, uh, really began with us saying, God, we want to go to places that are hard. We want to go to the places where the hurting and the broken and the desperate are, and we want to embed ourselves into that ministry by meeting needs and simply preaching the good news of the gospel of Jesus. And we believe that's what it means, and we're going to talk about that today. 